Safe practices in the forestry industry are important for successful harvests and worker health. But when working with large timber and heavy machinery, it's easy to overlook another kind of hazard, the use of pesticides. If you don't know what to look for, pesticides can seem almost invisible, but they can also be very dangerous to worker health on the job. And in some cases, those dangers can even follow them back to their homes. This training film is intended to help workers find a safe approach to working around forestry pesticides. There are two groups of forestry employees who should be aware of potential pesticide exposure. Handlers are those who mix, load, apply, or work with pesticides or with application equipment. Workers are those who perform activities like planting trees, falling timber, setting chokers, changing broads, or cruising timber, or otherwise support the production of the forest crop where pesticides have been used. This training is for workers. In this film, we will define what pesticides are and explain how they are used. We will then discuss pesticide exposure. We will share practices that will help prevent exposure and increase safety. We'll also discuss the Worker Protection Standard, or WPS, that forestry operators are required to follow. In this section, we'll learn what pesticides are. We'll also cover the different types of pesticides and what they're used for. We'll then talk about how pesticides are applied in the forest. Pesticides control insects and plants. They can also hurt you if you are accidentally exposed. Pesticides covered by the worker protection standard include herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides. Of these, herbicides are used most frequently in forestry. Herbicides control non-desirable shrubs and trees. Logged forest land is required to be replanted and herbicides are used to ensure that the desired species can thrive there. Invasive plants and weeds can also prevent healthy forest regrowth. Insecticides are applied to control insects. Pesticides are usually applied in the forest in one of three ways. Aerial spraying, hack and squirt, and backpack spraying. Aerial spraying is done from airplanes or helicopters to cover large areas. Rules are established around weather and protecting non-target resources such as wetlands and lakes. The hack and squirt method is also common. It is also known as bark injection. A handler hacks a small cut into the non-desirable tree and squirts herbicide solution into the cut. A sharp blade and common spray bottle are typically used in this process. Backpack spraying takes place around newly planted trees. Pesticides sprayed from backpacks usually only cover portions of a plantation in spots or strips. In all cases, pesticides can only be applied by trained handlers. Employers can't require or allow workers to mix, load, or apply pesticides without handler training. Pesticides are used to control plants and insects, but they can also hurt you if you are exposed. Pesticides include insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides. The most common category used in forest operations is herbicides. Three common ways to apply pesticides are aerial application, hack and squirt, and backpack spraying. In this section, we'll show where and how exposure can occur and discuss how pesticides can get into your body. We'll then highlight several scenarios on dealing with exposure once it has occurred. The first potential hazard is drift from an off-target movement or aerial application. But you don't need to be directly sprayed or see a live application to be exposed to pesticides. Equipment on a landing may have been contaminated by an off-target drift from a nearby application. You also might come in contact with treated foliage and areas on a worksite. Vehicles or crummies that have also transported handlers may have also become contaminated. There are several ways pesticides can enter the body. The effects can vary and can range from immediate symptoms of irritation to chronic effects, sensitization, and delayed effects that appear much later. These delayed effects can sometimes be hard to identify and connect to an exposure incident. 
allergic reactions to pesticides can be enhanced by existing medical conditions. Eye exposure can occur from direct spraying or splashing, but also when rubbing your eyes or forehead with contaminated gloves, hands, or clothing. Some pesticides will cause temporary but substantial eye injury or even permanent eye damage. Others may not irritate your eyes, but can pass through your eyes, traveling throughout your body and causing harm. Oral or ingestion exposure may occur several ways. Not washing hands before eating, drinking, chewing tobacco, or smoking can cause pesticides to enter through your mouth. You also might mistake a pesticide container for water, or pesticides may have been placed in a water or food container and may have accidentally been consumed. Your mouth, throat, and stomach can be burned by some pesticides. Other pesticides will enter this way and be absorbed and carried in your blood throughout your body. Inhalation exposure happens when you breathe in pesticide vapors or mist, most often from drift or from re-entering a sprayed area too soon. Some pesticides severely irritate your entire respiratory system. In other cases, the pesticides may just enter your body through your respiratory system and cause an asthmatic type of reaction. Skin or dermal exposure is the most common. In addition to contacting drift or being sprayed directly, touching contaminated equipment, foliage, vehicles, or clothing can cause skin exposure. Decontamination with soap, water, and paper towels is essential. Contact with a pesticide may cause your skin to itch, blister, crack, or change color. Or it can pass through your skin and move throughout your body. Different parts of the body absorb pesticides at different rates. The groin area readily absorbs pesticides, therefore it is essential to wash hands with soap and water prior to using the toilet. We'll look at several exposure scenarios and how you might deal with them. In the first scenario, a worker with asthma experiences difficulty breathing plus burning. What steps should you take? First, tell the supervisor right away. Next, wash your face and change your clothes. Hand washing water should be kept separate from drinking water. Your supervisor should radio the land manager to find out product information to send to the clinic. A colleague should take the affected worker to the nearest clinic. Longer distances may require a life flight. In the second scenario, a worker contacts treated foliage and then rubs his eyes. First, flush the eyes with water. Each crew should carry at least one gallon of rinse water per worker. Each crew should also have a pint-size eye wash bottle on hand. If eyes are still burning, seek medical attention. The supervisor should find out the specific pesticide product to provide to the clinic. In the next scenario, a worker is contacted by drift. What steps should you take? First, change your clothes and wash your face and hands. Don't carry the contaminated clothes inside the vehicle. You may re-expose yourself, your co-workers, or even family members. Pregnant women and children are especially at risk to exposure. Watch out for signs like nosebleeds, rash, vomiting, difficulty breathing, or symptoms like muscle cramps, headache, stomach cramps, and tightness in the chest. If they appear, seek medical treatment. In the last scenario, a worker drinks from an unlabeled container containing pesticides. Take the following steps. First, contact the supervisor immediately and determine the pesticide information using safety data sheets. Contact poison control and follow their recommended steps. Have a copy of the label sent to the clinic. Transport immediately to medical facilities. Long distances may require a life flight. Exposure to pesticides can occur in a number of ways. From drift or by coming into contact with treated foliage, equipment and clothing, or a contaminated vehicle. Pesticides can enter your body through your eyes, mouth, respiratory system, or skin. Skin exposure is the most common. Others, including your coworkers and family, can be exposed through contamination. Some symptoms of exposure are acute or immediate. You'll notice signs right away. Others can be chronic. You may not notice them right away, and they can even cause permanent effects. Steps in dealing with exposure scenarios include stabilizing the situation by stopping the exposure, decontaminate by washing with soap and water, and change into clean clothes. 
apply first aid, notify your supervisor, and seek medical attention if necessary. Now we'll discuss a common sense approach to preventing pesticide exposure. Never store pesticides or other chemicals in an unlabeled container. Never drink from a container that may have been exposed or that is unfamiliar to you. Workers have become seriously ill or have even died from drinking what they thought was water from a container. Wash hands before eating, drinking, chewing gum, chewing tobacco, smoking, or using the toilet. Wear clothes that completely cover your skin. Be cautious of vehicles. If you think that a crummy has been used by a handler crew, raise the issue. Some handlers add blue dye to pesticides to identify where they have been applied. If you see blue dye in a vehicle, don't enter it and notify your supervisor. Pesticide residues can be on your clothing. After working in treated areas, change clothes, shower, and wash hair with shampoo upon arriving home, or, if possible, prior to entering your personal or family vehicle. Wash your work clothes separately from your family clothes. While you may not see the oils or chemicals on your skin, you could share them without knowing, like with poison oak. If you smell chemical odors or see dying foliage where you are told to work, ask about it. Your supervisor should call and find out the last spray dates and check re-entry times. Do not take pesticide containers home. Be aware of aerial applications. If you see aerial spraying in progress, Stop and wait until it passes before entering the area. You should not be on a road or in an area inside the Application Exclusion Zone, or AEZ. The AEZ is the area within 100 feet of the aerial application equipment. Improved communication. When different people and teams are in charge of different aspects of forest operations, incidents can happen. Ask about spray schedules and encourage communication between crews. The Worker Protection Standard, sometimes called WPS, is something that your employer is required to follow. Enacted by the Environmental Protection Agency, WPS aims to reduce poisoning and injury among both workers and handlers in a variety of industries. You should learn these standards and you should raise concerns when you feel they are not being followed. Your employer must tell you about impending applications that will take place on their land within a quarter mile of your work location. You must not enter these areas until after the restricted entry interval has passed. If your employer instructs you to do early entry work, which is doing specific tasks before the expiration of a restricted entry interval, you must be 18 years old. You will also be given additional instruction before conducting these tasks. You should stay vigilant when working on the edges of harvest units. It is always possible communication between crews has not occurred. Watch out for signs of drift. Pesticides have labels that show the required restricted entry interval. While pesticide labels are required to be on site for pesticide handlers, labels will not readily be available to workers in the woods. These, along with SDS sheets, will be at the landowner's office or shop. They will be readily available during normal business hours. You cannot be denied reasonable access to this information, and you may designate, in writing, a representative to request access to pesticide application and hazard information. Each pesticide has specific requirements. Your supervisor must know who to contact to provide assistance with this information at the job site. Warning signs may not always appear in the woods, but they will always be seen at seedling nurseries. Do not enter any area that has this sign displayed. You should be informed verbally of areas to be treated within a quarter mile of your location. Safety data sheets and application information are required to be available. Safety data sheets provide health hazard, emergency medical treatment, and other information about the pesticides used on the worksite that you may come into contact with. You cannot face retaliation or discrimination for your refusal to violate a WPS requirement or for cooperating in an investigation. There are a number of common sense steps for preventing exposure. Watch out for unlabeled containers, wear clothes that cover all of your skin, be cautious of contaminated vehicles and equipment, pay attention to chemical odors and dead foliage, don't bring residues home and don't take pesticide containers home, don't bring children or non-working family members with you when working in pesticide-treated areas, always shower, 
shampoo hair, and change into clean clothes upon arriving home before touching anyone in your family, and work to improve communications. The worker protection standard is in place for employee protection from pesticides. Be familiar with the standards that apply to pesticides. You should never face retaliation for raising concerns or refusing to follow practices that violate standards. If you suspect pesticide use violations, report them to the state or tribal agency responsible for pesticide enforcement. Information on who to contact will be displayed at the landowner's office or shop. You should now be familiar with pesticides used in forestry, along with potential hazards and scenarios for exposure. You should also know how to deal with exposure if it should occur, and you should also know steps to take to prevent exposure situations. The Worker Protection Standard is in place to protect the health and safety of forestry workers. Your employer must follow these standards. Our forests are an amazing resource. They provide jobs, recreation, and a beautiful landscape to work in. Being smart and safe on the job will help protect your health and your career and allow you to experience the benefits of working in the woods.